and I won't read it in Hebrew because it's such a dull uh, uh, information. I read it directly in English, and if some irony will uh, smuggle itself into my words, uh, it's in, it is intention. The problem is, is it a connection of the Akedah? Or it would have been better to make a separate chapter of it. Because the next chapter is the death of, of uh, Sarah. And Langton hated small chapters. So he was really in a dilemma. What should he do with these verses? So he decided to attach them to the Akedah. Now I'll read them and I, I'm free. I can decide whatever. Okay. So, and it happened after these things, once again, that it was told to Abraham, saying, look, Hine, Milka too has born sons to Nahor, your brother. Not only you have a son, but Milka, the wife of Nahor, your brother, has also children. Uz, his firstborn, and Buz, his brother, and Kemuel, the father of Aram, and Chesed, and Chazor, and Pildash, and Idlat, and Betuel. Now something very interesting, and Betuel begot Rivka. Oh, this is good news, because uh, we are concerned that Yitzchak has to marry. So we get here a little hint that there is a Rivka waiting somewhere in the old country. These eight, forever look for anybody who can't count with his fingers, these eight Milka bore to Nachor, Abraham's brother, and his concubine, whose name was Reuma, she too gave birth to Teva, and to Gacham, and to Tachash, and to Macha. Most of these people that we don't know, they are mentioned only here. How do we know? What does this mean? Oh, in, in, in halachic language, on your and Rosh Hashanah, when we read the Akedah, should we read these verses and destroy our story? Or uh, end up before them? And Chazal, not knowing Stephen Langton, decided like Stephen Langton. We read. And the, uh, the bar created the end Macha with a great triumph. Macha was born to. <laughs> what could this mean? So you have to understand that biblical narrative speaks in the in the hidden language. It is very clear that Nahor had twelve children, eight and four. Twelve in the book of Breshit is the number of national wholesomeness. If you want to say this person has arrived in a full-fledged nation, you say he had 12 children or 12 tribes. Ishmael had 12 children. Esav had 12 children. I tell you a secret. Yaakov will have 10 children, 12 children in two generations. <laughs> from four wives. But Nahor, the non-Zionist brother of Abraham, <laughs> who stayed in the old country, shame on him, has 12 children. What news? There comes uh, some Bedouins on camels and tell Abraham, you know, we know your brother. He had a bar mitzvah to his 12th child. <laughs> And Abraham and Sarah are looking to each other and saying, He got well, and we got one. And this one was almost taken from us. This is the true meaning of being in the chosen people. You can hate me for saying this, but this is the true meaning. All nations have their flags and the UN for, for centuries. And finally, you have the blue star of Israel in the United Nations. We are latecomers. God promises Abraham to be a nation and to get a land. First of all, his wife is a baron. Finally, Yitzhak is born and he's almost taken away. And the land 
We will get in the days of Yeshua. What does this mean? It means that to be a Jew, we, do you need patience, religious patience? You are a nervous Zionist who wants achshav, achshav, achshav. He wants everything to be fulfilled in the present. The Jewish people won't uh, survive this. The Jewish people exist because for 2,000 years we had the patience of Abraham Avinu. The patience to believe that finally we'll get where other peoples have got before. This is really annoying, right? <laughs> so I want to please you. It is true that we get what other peoples get very late. But only the children of Abraham are sitting at Pardes at Tuesday night and learn the story to this very day. Shalom.